about missing the mark. Oh, 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 let's go, go, Gadget. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for another top 10 worst movie casting choices. Wow! For this list, we've picked casting choices that, after the movies were released, still left people scratching their heads. Want somebody to pay, wants them to suffer. While other casting decisions were controversial, some of them worked out for the better. Why so serious? If you don't see a casting choice you think should be on the list, be sure to check out our first video of the top 10 worst movie casting choices. Sure wish things could have turned out different. Number 10, Terrence Howard as Lieutenant Colonel James Rhodey Rhodes, Iron Man. Who's this? It's Rhodes. Sorry, hello? I said it's Rhodes. Speak up, please. What the hell is that noise? Most of us didn't take much issue with Terrence Howard's casting as Rhodey, but there was certainly a noticeable difference in quality when the role was recast for the sequel. Can not expect to see you here? Look, it's me. I'm here. Deal with it. Let's I move on. In hindsight, Howard's Rhodes came off as whiny and reactive, easily letting Stark's antics get under his skin. And he didn't really come off as a decorated military colonel. Okay. I don't blow him on my hair. There it is. We got Colonel Rhodes rolls in. By contrast, Don Cheadle plays the role with confidence, seeming like a caring friend, but not a pushover. You gotta get upstairs and get on top of the situation right now. Listen, I've been on the phone with the National Guard all day, trying to talk them out of rolling tanks up the PCH, knocking down your front door, and taking these. With War Machine as your alter ego, chances are you're all about business. But that's exactly what we didn't get from Howard in the first Iron Man. Put your hand down. You think you got what it takes to wear that suit? We don't have to do this, Tony. You want to be the War Machine? Take your shot. Put it down. You going to take a shot? Put it down. No! Drop it, Tony. Take it. Number nine, Kevin Costner as Robin Hood, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Wrong. This is my land and my tree, therefore whatever's in it also belongs to me. Robin Hood Prince of Thieves surprised audiences when it was released, with its solemn tone and level of violence. Though the actors aren't to blame for this tonal misfire, casting Kevin Costner as Robin Hood is one decision that still boggles moviegoers to this day. And why should the people listen to you? Because, unlike some other Robin Hoods, I can speak with an English accent. This is due to his missing British accent and his lack of attempt to replicate one. You'll have to fight me for it. <laughs> Love to, mate. Also gone were the smart quips and fantastic sense of fun Robin Hood was known for. Get up! Move faster! Move faster. Great idea. In their place was a hero that took himself too seriously and took away all the playfulness that often accompanies stories of Robin Hood and his merry band of thieves. Forget yourself, Azim. I do not ask for your company or counsel. Number eight, Tyler Perry as Alex Cross, Alex Cross. Cross here. Based on the successful book series, the character Alex Cross is no stranger to the big screen. This is Alex Cross, DCPD. I need to talk to you, okay? Morgan Freeman played the role with gravitas in previous films like 1997's Kiss the Girls. But the same cannot be said for Tyler Perry when he took a stab at the psychologist and police lieutenant in 2012. Are you having fun? Though his performance isn't the worst we've ever seen, his too serious attitude is so laughably bad it hurts. You are one sick, twisted son of a bitch, do you know that? Dr. Cross, you're taking this personally. Yeah, about as personal as you took running out of that building with your tail tucked between your legs. Of course, having his Medea role follow him certainly didn't help sell him as an action star. Have a oh, good hell, day. No, you gonna pack five? And you gonna give me five years? And you ain't gonna take me back there to get. Come on, here. What you gonna do? What the hell are you gonna do? Five years? I got you. Five years? You ain't gonna take me out of here. I ain't gonna. I ain't gonna. I ain't gonna. Number seven, Colin Farrell as Alexander. Alexander. The greatest honor a man can ever achieve is to live with great courage. Undefeated in battle, Alexander the Great is one of history's most accomplished military commanders, building one of the largest ancient world empires during his reign. Conquer your fear, and I promise you, you will conquer death. Colin Farrell, although an accomplished actor, lacked the presence and charisma needed to portray such an historical figure. No! No! 
You've taken from me everything I've ever loved! Maybe you! you Stop it! Stop acting like a boy! With the 2004 epic historical drama already lagging from a less than interesting story and painful narration, Farrell tries his best but fails to evoke even the slightest response from audiences struggling to sit through this nearly three hour film. <laughs> This is one history lesson we'd all like to forget. <laughs> and Clyde has spoke true. Number six, Adrian Brody as Royce, Predators. Maybe she knows. There's no denying that Adrian Brody is one fine actor, having won an Academy Award for his performance in The Pianist. However, casting him in a franchise that was made famous by Arnold Schwarzenegger was a bit of a stretch. We're being hunted. Despite his beefed up physique, Brody's Royce just wasn't believable as an action hero. I want off this planet. Using a dark Batman like voice and forced one liners certainly didn't help his cause either. You understand me, don't you? You wanted me. Here I am. The movie was a moderate hit, but unlike the original, it's not remembered for its likable lead. Now, let's find a way off this f planet. Number five, Marlon Brando as Sakini, the tea house of the August moon. Robbery ladies, kind of gentlemen, please to introduce myself. Despite being a satire, the casting of Marlon Brando as Okinawan villager Sakini in the tea house of the August Moon was a strange choice. Sakini by name, interpreter by profession. Brando spent months prepping for the role and had makeup applied to make him look Asian. Sakini here, boss. Don't ever put your finger on an officer. Although the actor was the major selling point, the yellow face distracts from the movie and makes you wonder why they wouldn't just cast an actor who already looked the part ethnically, which would have left Brando to play the role opposite Sakini instead. Pull your socks up. Oh, very sorry, boss. Very sorry. Socks up. Anything more, boss? That'll be all. Although the comedy was a success, it definitely paved the way for more odd casting choices to come. Good night, boss. Number four. Keanu Reeves as Jonathan Harker, Bram Stoker's Dracula. I have offended you with my ignorance, Count. Keanu Reeves has had a very successful career, ah! but is definitely no stranger to being miscast, such as in 2008's The Day the Earth Stood Still. I'll try. I must get back to the city. In Dracula, he plays Jonathan Harker, a solicitor helping with the title Count's estate acquisition. As if I have a part to play in a story that is not known to me. Acting alongside juggernauts like Gary Oldman <laughs> and Anthony Hopkins. Jesus Christ! I command you in the name of Christ! It's clear from the get-go that Reeves is out of his element and depth. I know where the bastard sleeps. I brought him there. His performance is hard to watch, with his dreadful accent standing out as one of the worst ever put to film. I didn't hear you come in. Truly horrifying indeed. We'll not let you go into the unknown alone. Number three, Arnold Schwarzenegger as Dr. Victor Freeze, Mr. Freeze, Batman and Robin. Allow me to break the ice. My name is Freeze. Learn it well. If someone told you that you can never have too many puns, then they surely haven't seen this disaster piece. What killed the dinosaurs? The Ice Age! Without question, 1997's Batman and Robin is the lowest point in Batman's big screen career. As director Joel Schumacher lays on the cheese by casting Arnold Schwarzenegger as the cold and pun-filled Mr. Freeze. I'm afraid that my condition has left me cold to your pleas of mercy. Arnold physically looks the part, but unfortunately, all believability is lost the second he opens his mouth. I will pull Batman's heart from his body and feel it freeze in my hands. <sighs> The actor made a name for himself with his charisma and token one-liners. It is the size of your gun that counts. But what's on display here is too unbearable to watch. The heat is on. Number two, Mickey Rooney as I.Y. Yuniyoshi, Breakfast at Tiffany's. Mitsuko Raifri, I brought this! 
Despite prompting some laughs when Breakfast at Tiffany's was originally released, casting Mickey Rooney in the role of Mr. Yunioshi caused quite the stir in later years. You cannot go on or keep ringing my bell! You disturb me! You must have a key me! Many feel that there's nothing funny about this offensive caricature of the Japanese people. In 30 seconds, I got to call the police! Of course, casting a Japanese actor instead probably wouldn't have made the situation any better either, considering the role. Today's world is a lot more sensitive to portrayals such as this, and this casting proved that we should be more mindful when populating such roles. If you don't stop with that pornograph, right this minute I'm going to go to the police department! Well, that's more better! Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few honorable, or in this case, dishonorable mentions. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> I am. Difficult. What's so difficult about it? Goodbye. It's easy. What's so hard about saying goodbye? Uh, who are we talking about? Nobody. Just forget I said anything. What are you going to do now? I'm gonna kick some butt. When the world trembled at the sound of our rockets, well, they will tremble again at the sound of our silence. Number one, the whole cast, The Last Airbender. It wasn't very smart. M. Night Shyamalan's take on the much-beloved animated series will go down in history as one of the most awful film adaptations ever made. He had his chance. He missed it. Aside from its completely unforgivable visual effects and the fact that it stripped the fun out of the story, he decided to change up all the ethnicities of the show's characters on a whim. You didn't tell me that. You didn't ask. This was compounded by acting that can only be described as mind-numbingly bad across the board. The Avatar actors awkwardly fumble through each scene and are either numb or too emotional, as if acting were a completely second language to them. What? It's just too much of a shame to bear. Why, Shyamalan, why? You make the fire out of nothing. Do you agree with our list? What do you think is the worst casting decision ever made? For more well-cast top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. This is a one-woman show. I don't think so.